I pray that you have the man in the house this whole time. We are grateful for the opportunity to be here again in the presence of the Lord this morning. We're going to go ahead and get started uh, with our devotion. Uh, today is our family and friends day, uh, so we welcome all those who have come out this morning to visit with us, uh, to share in Jesus with us on this morning. And also, uh, it is first Sunday, so we will also have communion this Sunday as well. Amen. Uh, I've asked Deacon Bowles to come up. Amen. He's going to lead us in a song this morning. Matter of fact, I'll do scripture, do prayer, and then he'll lead us in a song. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory. Father and our God, 
the creator, the maker of all mankind. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we come this morning, Lord, with thanksgiving in our heart. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another expression of your goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Heavenly thank Father, you, we thank you for last night sleeping and right. realizing it was you and nobody but you, Lord, to call us by name this morning and able us to get up to see a new day that's never yes. been seen yes. and never will be seen again. Yes. And for that, Lord, we're grateful, Lord. Thank and Lord, you. you being the God that you are, Lord, you didn't stop there, but you gave us a reasonable portion of our health and strength. You called us in our, in our right mind. You're giving us the activities of our limbs. And, and here we are, Lord, we find out way back out to the house of worship yes, one more time. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, with a humble heart and a bow down yes, head. Lord. Realizing, Lord, that we come this far by grace. Yes. Leaning and depending on your everlasting arm, Lord. And realizing that we that it hasn't been, that we've been so good, Lord, but you've been just that good to us. In spite of our condition, Lord, you always see something in us and able us to go on in your name. And Lord, we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for being so good and thank you for being so kind. Thank you for being so merciful. Thank you for being so forgiving, Lord. Thank you for your love that you continue to shower upon us each and every day. Lord, we had a thousand tongues. We couldn't tell you thank you enough, Lord. But here we are, Lord. We just want to say thank you. Lord, we thank you for everyone that come out from the sound of my weak voice, Lord. We ask you to continue to bless them and realize that some come out for one thing and some come out for another. But through it all, Lord, you said that we need to be on one accord. And here we are lifting up your name, Lord. Heavenly Father, we don't want to go no further before we say, Lord, forgive us from our sins. Cast our sins just as far as the east is to the west. Holy Father, we ask you to create in us a clean heart, Lord, and renew in us a spirit, Lord, that we can continue to run this race that you put before us, Lord. Lord, we pray for the one that's going to stand in John's shoes this morning. We pray that he say something, Lord, to do something to somebody. Come on and say, Lord, what can I do to be saved? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Lord, it could have been us, but Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for being so good, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Realize, Lord, you didn't have to do it, Lord. Lord, we just thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a hand praise this morning. Give the Lord another hand praise this morning. Give the Lord another hand praise this morning. Y'all can do better than that. Amen. Shout out hallelujah. Amen. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Amen. We are grateful this morning. Amen. For our deacons. Amen. We thank Deacon Bowles. Amen. I, I thank Deacon Bowles. I thank Deacon York. Amen. Deacon Terry is downstairs. Amen. But he's in the house. Amen. Uh, amen. And we're just praying for all of our other deacons. And we just thank you all for coming out this morning. Amen. And this time we're going to have a welcome. Amen. For our family and friends day from Sister Carol. Amen. Welcome from Sister Carol. Amen. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 3, verses 31 through 35. 
31 through 35 in Mark chapter 3. Uh, and so that you get your finger on that area. Amen. Uh, but before that, amen, I, I, I was asked something. And, and when I youth asked me to do something, I try to work with them in doing it. Amen. 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 So I had a, one of our youth, amen, she came to me this morning. She said, Pastor, I got a song I've been working All on. Right. And I want to sing it. Amen. 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 And, 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 and I had to give her the litmus test first. Amen. I said, sing your song for me. Amen. So she started singing a song. Amen. I, 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 and, and so when she sang her song in boldness, amen, and in confidence, amen, I said, okay, then I'll go and let her sing her song this morning. Amen. So, so we're going to ask if Miss Tiana would come up. Amen. 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 And just give, give, us, give, us, give us a few lines of your song this morning. Amen. Amen. Hold on.
Amen. I'm thankful, amen, for God's presence in you all's life. Thank you so much. Uh, at the end of, 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 of the sermon, amen, we'll have an official count, so uh, we don't want nobody to leave. Amen. Amen. So, so we'll have our official count, amen. There's a couple of prizes that we will go forth with this morning, amen, just to celebrate our family and friends day. And again, we're so grateful that each and every one of you are, are here on this morning. Amen. 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 Uh, Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 3, 31 through 35, amen. And I'm going to ask y'all's prayers this morning, amen. Yeah, I'm working on about four hours of sleep. Nia had an early flight this morning, amen. So we had to take her to the, I, I had to take her this morning to the airport, amen. So we're grateful, amen. And she sent me a text, so I'm, re I'm relaxed because she said I made it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, all amen. Right. I don't know about you, amen, but when you got somebody 1,800 miles away and they can say I made it, amen, that's how amen. you amen. So, so we're grateful to God for all of his continued care, amen, and for all that he continues to do for us, amen. We give all honor and praise to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is first and foremost in my life, to God the Father, to his Son, Jesus, to the Holy Spirit, whom he has left, amen, as a comforter on today, uh, amen, to all of our deacons, amen, I see Deacon McBride came in, amen, I see him, amen, amen, Deacon uh, 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 Dukes and our Dukes, amen, Deacon Bowles, amen, Deacon York, Deacon Terry downstairs, we're grateful for them, Deacon Willis and Deacon uh, Dukes in their absence on this morning. To all of our Deaconesses, amen. I see Deacon, Deaconess McBride, amen. I see also Deaconess Terry, amen, and Deaconess, amen, uh, uh, York. And then we see our mother, one of them, amen, Mother Bay. Always good, amen, when our mothers, amen, are here in the house with us, amen. Uh, to uh, our very beautiful First Lady, Sister Carol, amen. Uh, to all of our members, visitors, and friends, amen, we are grateful and thankful for you to be here on today, amen. Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 3, 31 through 35, it reads definitely, There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked round about on them which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. Uh -huh. Amen. I read here in Mark chapter 3, verses 31 through 35. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of this holy word. Let us pray. Most kind and gracious, Father, Lord, we come this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord. We ask now, Father, that you decrease me, that none of me and all of you will come forth, Lord. We ask now that you will fill, Lord, this empty cup, uh, Lord, with your word, Father, with your spirit, Father, and fill me up, Lord, and then dispense, Lord, what you desire to be dispensed to your people, uh, that, Lord, it may bring life to them, Father. We pray now, Father, that your word will fall upon good ground. So that, Lord, it will spring forth, Lord, a reality, Lord, that it will bring forth, Father, a fruitfulness, that it will bring forth, Lord, joy in the lives of individuals, Lord. We ask now, Father, that as the enemy goes to and fro, seeking whom he may be able to bow, we ask now, Father, that you would hold him, put him at bay, put him in a headlock, let him know, Father, he has no domain, no, no rule here, that, Lord, your word will go forth, Father, and as a result, Father, I pray that people will walk out of here liberated. Yes, Hallelujah. That people will walk out of here liberated. That people will walk out of here liberated. That people will walk out of here, Lord, liberated. And, and, and focus, Master, for what's to come, Master. For we realize, Master, that uh, we are in the end times right now, Father. And Lord, the hour is drawing near. Uh, it is getting shorter and shorter, Father. We've got to make a decision. We've got to make a choice, Father, whom we're going to serve. And as we make that decision, Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus that we make the right decision, Father, that may bring forth, Lord, glory to you. And more importantly, Father, that it will bring forward eternal salvation for us. And, well, we won't be sure to give you the praise, glory, and honor that's due unto you. It's in Jesus Christ's holy and righteous name we pray and give you thanks. Let every heart say amen, amen, amen and amen again. Amen. Mark chapter 3, 31 through 35. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without sin unto him, calling him, and the multitude sat about him. And they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is 
Yeah. My mother or my brother? That's a question. And he looked round about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. That's an exclamation mark. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same as my brother and my sister and my mother. Yeah. I'd like to use for a topic this morning. Are you in good company? 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 Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I hope you're good company. Amen. A -a Amen. Amen. I, I, I would like to, again, thank all of you all for attending on this morning. Amen. We realize, oh, Lord, uh, that, that uh, you did not have to be here. There was a lot of other places that you could have been. Amen. Uh, uh, but you chose, amen, to be here with us on this morning, and for that we are eternally grateful. And, and although we are having family and friends day, amen, it is my prayer that the Holy Spirit actually led you here, touched your heart, inspired your feet, and motivated you to make your way here this morning, amen. That you were not coerced, that you were not promised uh, some grand dinner afterwards, amen, for showing up, amen. That, that you came, amen, because you felt like there was something that you could gain as a result of being amen. in the house of the Lord on today. Now, the choices that we make, amen, uh, that we have on Sunday mornings have really multiplied over the years. When you think about all the choices that we have on Sunday mornings, amen, now we can wake up in the morning, we can watch television, we can watch 25 sermons before we even come to church, amen. Uh, we can do all of those things, amen. So over the course of the years, a lot of stuff has changed and we have more choices now. Uh, uh, for those that grew up like me, though, Sunday attendance, amen, from the time that Sunday school started to Sunday worship, amen, that was what we were required to do. It was a requirement, amen. Uh, Peter Bowles, I, I would imagine, amen, that Sister Bowles did the, wasn't going to just let you lay in the house, amen. Uh, amen. I know that Sister Carol had to get up and go, amen. I know I had to get up and go. Matter of fact, even when I went to summer vacation at my grandmother's house, amen, it wasn't no lay in the bed, amen. Uh, uh, grandma would get up, cook in the morning, amen, make sure that there was breakfast for everybody, but everybody but had to be out the house by the time 9.30 shot around because right, summer school started right. at 9.45. Yeah. And when we got there, guess what? We didn't have but one vehicle, so some of us had to actually walk. So, 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 so you can imagine about 10 kids running it down the highway, not the highway, the dirt road. Hello, let me help you. Amen. The dirt road, and we all down the dirt road headed to church while we watching other folk come around who had a few less kids. They in the car. Amen. But we were making our way to church. Amen. Uh, and by the time we got there, we wasn't stinky, we wasn't dusty, we wasn't none of that, but we were ready to go to Sunday school. We went to Sunday school, moved to Sunday school, went into Sunday worship. After we got out of Sunday worship, we were ready for the rest of the day, but we were doing what God had called us to do because it was required by, by our parents. Amen. It was a trend that even after my heathen years, yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me backtrack, amen. I said, even after my heathen years, yeah, I'm a pastor, amen. Yeah, I love the Lord, amen. But I had a few heathen years. And, and if y'all honest with y'all self, some of y'all can say the same thing. I'm a heathen. Don't yell out too loud, amen. Whisper it, amen. Just whisper it. Hey, hey man, I, I'm going to shout it out. I was a heathen, amen. Hey, hey man, I knew I should have been in church on Sunday morning when I was at college, amen. But it was so, 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 so convenient, amen, after a long Saturday night to just lay there. Yeah. That, that was the heathen years, amen. I, I'm so glad that God didn't call my name, amen, during my heathen years. I, I'm so glad that God didn't make up, amen, didn't did just say, you know what, Mark, I want you to date when I was in the midst of my heathen years, amen. I, I'm saying that, amen, because some of us are still on the verge of heathenistic tendencies. I ain't going to call you a heathen, amen. You have to call yourself a heathen, amen. But, but, but there's some heathenistic uh, tendency, amen, that still exists. And what we've got to do is make up in our mind that I'd rather serve the Lord and not heathenism. But I also have to be mindful, Deacon Bowles, that, 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 that not everyone grew up like I did. Not, not, not everybody had the opportunity, amen, to have a mother or a grandmother or a grandfather yeah, yeah. who said, get your butt up and go to church. Uh, 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 the Lord is my, uh, the best thing that could ever happen. Some of us did, some folks didn't have that. So what I have to be mindful of is that now you have the opportunity to choose for yourself. Yeah, yeah. See, 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 I, you know, after a while, you can't blame nobody for stuff in your life. No more. When you get about 18, you can't say mama and daddy did this and that's why I'm like, no, 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 you got to start making a video. I can make life choices now. 
and the choices that I make will make a difference in what comes forward going forward. I, I do do know, amen, that, 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 that as a result of me going to church and seeing an individual who didn't go to church, I did see a difference in the way that some stuff happened in their life. Oh, come on, if y'all be honest with yourself, amen, you, you, you know, amen, you, you know you got some yo-yos and Tommy Tons and sisters and all the rest of them who was dealing with some stuff in their life that didn't have the Lord, and that's why they dealt with the stuff they dealt with the way they had to, but they didn't have Jesus in their life. And there were some times you should have been in jail, locked up, under the jail, under the jail, over the jail, around the jail, but didn't go to jail because God and somebody had been praying on your behalf. I'm just talking about the difference of having Everybody in jail don't need to, ain't supposed to be in jail, and some folks that's supposed to be in jail ain't in jail. So, so, so we don't need to get cocky and bent out of shape and think that we're so much better than nobody because we ain't somewhere. Because if truth be told, some mm. now, 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 now we sit here in this world that's inundated with wildfires and, and droughts and floods and, 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 and Missouri saw a drought and a flood the same week. So, 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 so they got disease, we got pessimists, we got feelings of hopelessness uh -huh. and despair. The need for the Lord and the benefits associated with being in fellowship with him is greater yeah, than ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Believers have to be more diligent than ever. Churches have to be more empathetic than ever. We all have to love each other more than ever. Tell your name, it's cool to love people. Come on, don't, don't, don't tell me again. This church is saying, it's, it's cool to love people. It's all right to love, folks. Amen. We, we got this thing about love. Amen. Now, now let's, let's make sure we understand what love is about. Love is not selfish. Love is not cruel. Love is not taking from folks and then want all the time and not give back. Love is pleasing. But it ain't always about pleasure. So you got to understand that love, amen, will cover the multitude of sin. But we have to love each other in a dark manner, the same way that God loved us. This is why he went to Calvary on our behalf, because he loved us in spite of what we were. First Corinthians 13, 13 said, now about faith, hope, and love. He said, all these are important. He said, but the most important of all of those is love. Yeah, yeah, what the yeah. world needs now uh -huh. is love, sweet love. Yeah. This love coupled with devotion to serving God sets the stage for us for singing blessings, not only in your life, but as we sit here today in the lives of your family and friends. When you love right, your family and friends will actually benefit from it. Yes, yes. When you love the way you're supposed to love, amen, what we'll have is we'll have better people, we'll have better families, we'll have better communities, we'll have better cities, we'll have better countries, and overall, we'll have a better world. But we can't get there if we're not loving one another. So during Jesus' time here on earth, he would teach these valuable principles. Here's the principle. Sometimes at the expense of those who should have been closer to him and also working with him. But the reality is that he expressed in this passage of scripture that we're in today, Mark chapter 3, 31 through 35, that, 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 that there is some interactions that teach us the importance of priorities. Uh -huh. Say priorities. priorities. Loyalty. Loyalty. Say loyalty. loyalty. And service. And service. These three concepts we got to address uh, in our own lives if we desire to please God. If you're going to please God, you've got to have some priorities. If you're going to please God, you've got to be loyal to his word. And if you're going to love him, you've got to serve him like you never served before. Amen. amen, amen, amen. And so if we're looking at it in this particular case, the first thing that I want you to consider from this particular text is that you don't want to be where the Lord is not. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Turn to the neighbor and say, neighbor, the Lord with you last night. <laughs> amen, 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 amen. That, amen. that should have been an easy question for a lot. Amen. A amen. Was he in the midst of whatever you were doing last night? Was he in the midst of everything that you did when you woke up this morning? Was he in the midst of you getting to church this morning? Amen. Amen. Was he in the midst, amen, of you being here right now? Amen. Or have you already made up in your mind, I should be glad when Pastor get done so I can go. Because this family and friends day, and I, I, I'm done. I, I, I done done my part. Amen. But here's what we got to understand. There is a lot of places you could be. But if Jesus is not there, you don't want to be there. Uh, I, 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 I told you I had some heathen years. Amen. There were some places, amen, that I went to uh, 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 McBride. I, I, I tell you, amen, one way in, one way out. 
I'm so glad, amen, that I got out. Amen, amen. Some, some of y'all can test through it. Amen. Come on, come, come. Come on, man. Hey, I, I, I forgot. Just that, that's that other crowd. Just this other crowd. Amen. Amen. Y'all have always done everything right. Amen. 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 I'm just trying to help us. Amen. What, what, what if the Lord would have showed up in the midst of some of our foolishness? I don't want you to think that too long. Amen. Ha having revealed, amen, here in this particular text, or prior to the text, Jesus shared with us that if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand, and that if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. In other words, what he said is that if there's individuals in the kingdom and in the house, and they're all divided, the house or the kingdom will not stand. You know that to be true, amen, because if the husband and the wife or the boyfriend and the girlfriend or whoever ain't on the same accord, the house is a mess. And so what we understand, amen, is that in this world that we live in right now, if everybody's not on the same accord, we deal with chaos. That's what we're in right now. We are in the midst of chaos. Why? Because we got folks that are divided on everything. Amen. Amen. Black, white, this, that, this, up, down. We don't matter. It's some folks, amen, you can tell them the sky is blue, they can see it blue, they're going to say, no, it's green today. Because we got some folks that just come back at like that. They just don't want nothing to be the same. They're going to find a reason, amen, to be a, a against or opposed to you. Jesus goes on, he said that if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he can't stand. In other words, he said if Satan get all the people that are still nasty and evil, they all start raising up against each other, guess what? They won't stand either. He says, yeah, he says, and, and no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will bind first the strong man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You say, Pastor, what, what? How, how? That, that, that means something like this. Can't nobody come up in my house, I ain't need the address, but can't nobody come up in my house, amen, and buy my house, yeah. a, amen, unless they buy me. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Sister yeah. Carol ain't got to worry about nothing. That's right, that's right. Amen, amen, amen. A amen. She ain't got to worry. She ain't got to worry. Amen. Because they got to get to me first. Right. A amen, amen. If I'm on my P's and Q's and I'm trusting the Lord, Amen. They got to do some work to get to me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So if I hear the noise downstairs, uh -huh. I ain't saying, "Honey, go see what's going on." I ain't saying, "Honey, did you hear that?" <laughs> baby, did, baby, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Oh, uh, it, it, it's some cowards out there, amen. They send their wife, they want them right before they go, amen. Say, so, you know what, ain't no need both of us going. If you got somebody like that, you got to go ahead and X them out to life, amen. Amen, amen. I, I'm just telling you, amen. I'm going to go down and fight, amen. Why, why? Because that's my responsibility. A a amen, 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 amen. If Sister Carol ever had me talk to her, I'm going to go do something, amen. I, I give her the permission to go ahead and say, you dismissed. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, amen. Yeah. A amen, amen. Y'all laughing now, but there's some sad people out there. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. He then confirmed that all sins shall be forgiven in the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith whosoever shall blaspheme. However, he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost have never forgiven. So in other words, he said, if you talk crazy against the Holy Ghost, you got a problem. He said, because God ain't going to forgive. He said, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do that you can be forgiven for. He said, but when you blaspheme, when you talk about what the Holy Ghost ain't and who that, because when you talk about the Holy Ghost, you're talking about God. When you talk about the Holy Ghost, you're talking about Jesus. When you talk about the Holy Ghost, you messing up. So he said, when you do that, be prepared for whatever comes. Ah. He says, he says, he says, but it is in danger of eternal damnation. Why? He said, because that person who does that has an unclean spirit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Following this, we're told in the text that there came then his brother and his mother, and they standing without. So after Jesus has shared this with them, his mother and, and brother is and, and outside, and they come, and they're calling unto Jesus, and the multitude says to him, Jesus, behold, thy mother and thy brother without seek for thee. In other words, what they're saying is, your brother and your mother are outside, and they need to see you. Yeah, right, right. Jesus' family gives words to others to let them know that they were outside, and those around them relate the message. So now here's what happens. If you think about it, the people who are outside asking for Jesus have to distract somebody who's getting a lesson from the Lord. <laughs> And if they ask their questions in the middle of the sermon, then they can't hear what they might need to hear. And as a result of that, now they outside. And the question is, why they outside if they are related to Jesus? Come on, man. Come on, brother. Luke tells us something like this, amen. Uh, he 
shares a story concerning a rich man who finds himself in hell. And what we've got to keep in mind is that when you are related to the most powerful individual on earth, you should not have no problems. Ah, uh, here in the text, uh, in Luke chapter 16, we find that there was a young, uh, a rich man, and the rich man, amen, he had purple and fine linen, and he had money, and he was doing this, but there was a beggar who was named Lazarus, which laid at the gate full of sword, and the Bible shares with us that, 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 that this, this same individual, this rich man, finds Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham when he is actually, not at Lazarus and Abraham are not in hell, this man is in hell. But he sees Abraham and Lazarus afar off. And he tells, he said, Father, I got a message I want to send to my brothers. Yeah, yeah. He said, I got five brothers, and, and, and I know they probably ain't doing what they're supposed to do. But I need to send a message to them because they don't want to come here. No, no. And so what happens like that is that when you're going through hell, you have to tell somebody you don't want to go through this. Yeah. Come on, talk to me, talk to me. I promise sometimes that, that we want somebody to go through the same hell we're going through. So we'll go ahead and put them through that same you got to learn how to say, you know what, I'm going to take the L. I'm going to go ahead and go before somebody else. I'm going to lay my life down for them. You got to be sacrificial in your behavior so that somebody else can be saved as a result of the mistakes that you made, but you learned from it. The brother, the brother, the brother's request warns of danger of pursuing that which is counterproductive to the will of God and reminds us of the need to make every effort to get to know him so that we find success in life mentally, physically, and spiritually, as the psalmist in Psalm 16 and 11 said. He said, Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of joy. Uh -huh. Ooh. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The psalmist says, man, when you get your stuff right with God, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Amen. Man, how many of y'all can sleep at night and not worry? Amen. Every night. Amen. Every night I sleep. Amen. Every night I sleep. Amen. I sleep comfortably. Amen. A amen. Because I ain't worried about nobody chasing me. <laughs> I ain't worried about I done, done somebody wrong and they're going to come back and get me. I ain't worried that I didn't lie to God and cheated God out of his money and nothing else, amen. Well, I sleep comfortably because I realize, amen, that there's a comfortable sleeping when you trust God. Yeah. Amen. amen. It ain't no servant. Amen. Ain't no memory phone. None of that stuff help you sleep with. Y'all gonna get that later, amen. You done spent twelve thousand dollars to get your mattress so that your one side can heat up and cool off the way you want to, and you still ain't comfortable. Tell your neighbor when you get your life right with Jesus, you ain't got to worry about a mattress. <laughs> hallelujah, Hallelujah. Amen. When, 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 when we submit ourselves to the Lord, nothing else matters. When we submit ourselves to the Lord, nothing else matters. Tell you they say, neighbor, nothing else matters when you submit to the Lord. And our utmost goal should be to be wherever he is. Hear me, I want to be wherever Jesus is. That's, that's why it don't, it's not hard for me on Sunday morning to get up and get to church. Why? Because I know Jesus is in my house. But I also know that there's a benefit to meeting Jesus in the sanctuary. So that when I get to the sanctuary, there is an atmosphere that is beyond everything else that we deal with. So all I can do now is come in and I'm already happy. Amen. Why? Because I saw some people this week that I saw last week, which means that trouble might have came, but trouble didn't defeat you. And as a result of that, you can lift your hand and pray and say, Lord, I thank you for another Sunday morning. Now, now, to be wherever God is, though, it might require that you give up some stuff that appears to be comfortable to you. Amen? And, and then what you got to do is you got to learn how to take off the stuff that's uncomfortable or that's comfortable because that stuff is going to weigh you down. And you got to learn how to put on the stuff that's of God because that stuff is the stuff that's going to keep you moving. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Hey, amen. So, so, so Jesus at that moment is on assignment. So, so for them to come and ask for him to move or to come see them and for the other people to have to do that, he's saying, y'all messing with the assignment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh -huh. I grew up with y'all. Yeah. Y'all know me. So y'all yeah. yeah, yeah, should not. Come on, let, let, me, let me get not to get ahead of myself. Amen. A amen. What, what, what appears to be a brush off might have been, amen, to reveal that his family had not adequately accepted him for who he was. Jesus says, I'm going to deal with them. 
But I got something I got to deal with first, yeah. which leads to point number two, is that the Lord invites us all to accept him, but the choice is ours. Yeah. That's right, that's right. He, Uncle Godfrey, Jesus, God is making it available to us every day. Yeah. Some of us 70 years old, I'm 52. Every day, I can believe that God is showing me something to reveal himself to me. Yeah. I have to choose yeah. to serve him. Amen? That's right. I, I have to make up in my mind that I'm going to serve him. Amen? And so Jesus appears to be not moved by the concerns of the family being outside looking for him. Amen. It'd be kind of like right now. I'm in here preaching. Amen. And then somebody in the back said, somebody said they need to come see you. I said, they're going to have to wait till y'all get done preaching. That's right. That's right. That's right. And matter of fact, tell them to come in and sit down and just wait. If it's if that important, they can wait. That's right. That's right. But you just don't know sometimes. Amen. Folk come and want money. I want to talk to the pastor and the pastor only in the middle of the sermon. Right. Sit down. Get some work. By that time, you feel like you don't need no money from the pastor. Because <laughs> Jesus has revealed his riches to you. Amen. 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 So, so Jesus, instead of going to them, he said, who is outside? It's a question. And being all knowing, here's the deal. Jesus already knew who was out there. When they come to him saying, somebody outside, look at me. Jesus already knew they was going to come. But see, the people that was inside were exactly where they needed to be. It's the folks on the outside. Hmm. Let me see how I can help you all. Isn't it amazing that folks who don't come to church on a regular basis always pull it on you? When they go through, they pull on you. When you go through, you can't find it. So what happens is that they on the and so with them being on the outside, you on the inside, what they're saying is that they're trying to distract you from getting what you need to. So what happens is that sometimes you like to say, you might have to wait till I get what I need. Yeah, yeah. See, 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 we come to church on Sunday morning, it ought to be a fill-up. Yeah, yeah. Man, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you know, gas prices went down, thankfully. Hallelujah. Amen. Just a little bit. Amen. Amen. You got a, you got a small tank, it's all good. It's all good. Amen. A amen. But, but, but what happens, amen, is that when you come on Sunday, you ought to be empty from all the stuff you done poured out throughout the course of the week. If you're not empty on Sunday morning, that means you ain't helping nobody. That's right. That's right. There ought to be a draining during the course of the week. So that when you come in on Sunday morning, you're exhausted. Yeah. And you say, I got to get to church because I got to get filled up. Uh -huh. And what the word does is that the word begins now. You know, you know how it is. And, 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 and you, it's hard to tell if your tank is properly filling up if you got it on go. If your car is running, you know how your car is running, and you sit there and you look at it, amen. It's one thing. But it's another thing if the car off and you fill it up, and then the moment that you knew it was on empty and you turn that, that ignition, it goes right over the full. That's what you need. Because the problem is that as long as you're going and fill it up, you're still exhausting some of it. But the moment that you turn the vehicle off, amen, you can't exhaust none of what you fill it up with so that now you're full, fool. He says, he says, he says, they outside. And, 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 and so what happens is, here's a thought, here's a thought real quickly, uh, that if Jesus' family truly supported his work, if they was really in his corner, if they were really loyal to him, if they really had that priorities right, amen, they would be right in there with him. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. They wouldn't have to be outside talking about, can we come get him? Can you go get him? And, 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 and they would be taking some stuff off his plate. They would be providing a sound ear for his concern. They would be helping him with no hesitation, knowing, amen, when he was in need. And why were they outside? Uh -huh. Other people looking and saying, if them your people, why they ain't serving? They supposed to be there with you. That's right. That's right, man. Uh, so the question again is, were they sent to be a distraction mm -hmm. to him? Or was the enemy using them to keep them from getting what they really needed? Now, what happens is that the text doesn't say clearly, amen. But what we know for sure is that they on the outside looking for Jesus. Uh -huh. Sometimes the very people who have an opportunity to share in the work for the Lord are blinded by the very things that they think it should look like and not what the Lord says. Uh -huh. 
Don't get caught up in what you think ministry ought to look like. That's right. That's right. I'm helping somebody. Amen. Because sometimes we won't serve because it got to look a certain way. Mm-hmm. You got to have a certain number of people. I got to get a certain amount of praise. I got to get a certain. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, you're going to miss the mark. Mm-hmm. These two groups, his family and those presents, were being guided on here's the thing. God is teaching them how to listen. Beyond what they can hear. Yeah. You gotta be able to listen beyond what you can hear. To be able to do that, sometimes you gotta be still. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You gotta put on blinders. Amen. They say that blind people have a, uh, they, they, anytime that you lose a sense, it enhances another. Uh-huh. So if a person is blind, then typically they can have a better hearing. Or if a person is lack of hearing, they might they sight or smell senses might be a little bit more enhanced. Yes. I'm saying this is because I think we're missing the mark because what happens is that we're trying to do everything we think makes us a good Christian as opposed to doing what God is telling us to do to make us his people. Yeah. So so we've got to learn how to take off, amen, what we want and begin to listen. And I think we neglect to hear, amen, or we neglect to his listen uh, because we already have an answer before anything's ever said. Uh-huh. Well. You ever heard trying to talk to somebody who already got the answer? <laughs> How annoying is that? Especially when they've been giving you the opportunity. You're, just, you're the one in charge. So you tell them what they need to do, but they're already telling you what the answer is. Anybody like it, just say amen. 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 I don't feel like I'm by myself. Amen. Oh my what, what, what we got to do is we got to train ourselves to be better listeners, particularly when it comes to the word of God. Uh-huh. Yes. See, right now, we get distracted. We can get distracted by a baby crying uh-huh. in church. Uh-huh. Guess what? Babies cry. Yeah. So that shouldn't be odd to us. Amen. Amen. We'll get distracted. Somebody got to go downstairs use the restroom. Guess what? We all fill up and got to release. That shouldn't distract you. Amen. Amen. We'll get distracted, amen, by stuff that happened yesterday. We want to tell somebody in church today what happened yesterday. Why you didn't call them yesterday? What I'm saying is that we can't listen because we are too inundated with stuff that's coming to our ears. Here's the deal. When you come into, I'm, I'm going to help somebody this morning. When you come in church, amen, if you know you sit around people that don't talk all the time, put earmuffs on. You say, well, Pastor, I got earmuffs on. I can't hear nothing. I, I beg to differ. If you sit there and focus, God will be able to speak to you through the earmuffs. But you can hear all that other stuff without the earmuffs on. So, 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 so God is teaching us. He's the, he, y'all, y'all think I'm playing. But think, if you read this carefully, he's dealing with their listening, their capacity to listen. He said, can you listen while everything else is still going on? You got to be able to still serve when mess is going on. You got to still be able to serve when you sit. You got to still be able to serve when you're going through. You got to still be able to lift your hand and pray when stuff is going on. Why? Because God said, if I can keep your attention in the stuff that's trying to take your attention, I got you. Don't be so easily persuaded by stuff that has nothing to do with your salvation. Amen. Paul shares, amen, in Philippians 3, 6, 7, he says, be careful for nothing. In other words, in another uh, translation says, be anxious for nothing. In other words, he said, don't worry about stuff. He said, don't worry about it. Stuff happened. As sure as you live, something's going to happen. And, amen. If you get a year old, there's something going to ache next year. It's just going to happen. It's going to happen. If you ain't had no eggs before now, then you just say, Lord, thank you for the year of eggless Amen. A- a- amen. But when you, when you get a little older, you're going to age. You're going to feel age. You're going to find age in the morning that you didn't have last night. You might have an age this afternoon that you didn't have this morning. I- I'm just being truthful with you. Amen. And so there's no need to worry because Solomon tells us that all of this stuff is going to go away. It's going to decay. All of it. Nothing that we have. Our flesh is not going to go to heaven. So you can Pilates, lift weights, do all 
you want you to look good here. But if your inside man ain't right, yeah, yeah, yeah. ain't no weights in heaven. No Pilates instructors. They all they do is serve. So that's the exercise you need to be getting right now. Learn how to serve. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Clap it. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Church shouldn't be so silent. Yeah, yeah. I thank God for the babies because I think they're here. A amen. Yeah. It should be so silent. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We, 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 Paul is sharing with us in this particular Philippians 3, 6, and 7 that, 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 that there is a confident expectation of who God is and what God can do and we do not walk on eggshells worried about everything that come our way. Yeah. But we take it to the Lord and trust that he will take care of it in his timing. Say God's timing. God's timing. How do I know this to be true? There was a woman, a certain woman, with an issue of blood. She had it for 12 years. The Bible said that she went to the doctor. She went to the doctors and she didn't get no better. That means she spent her money. She kept going to the doctor and nothing happened because the Lord said it ain't time to do it. And so what happens is that it was not her issue that was her issue. It was her faith. And the moment that she realized that she had no longer had to depend on her body, but had to depend on Jesus, the Bible says she pressed her way and she made her way to him. And she did not have to touch him fully, but she just touched the hem of his body. So that was an understanding. All I've got to do is get in his presence and it can change my situation. Paul said, Paul said, I came to the Lord Christ. And I asked the Lord, remove this thorn from my side. He said, God ain't going to do it. So he said, nevertheless. He said, your grace, your grace, your grace, your grace is sufficient. He said, Lord, I, I, I realize I, I, I want to do this. I want to be able to do this. I don't want to have no pain when I'm doing it. Amen. He said, but guess what? Sometimes I got to give you a little pain to keep you in prayer. We talked about that this morning about prayer. We talked about somebody said, well, you know, we need to get some pads so we can put it down so our knees don't be hurting. I said, if you pray often, your knees will be conditioned to whatever area you pray in. So you will never need pads because your knees are already positioned for the position. Y'all get that on the way home while you're going past churches in Kentucky. Amen. 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 And so what we understand is that there are some who have been in his presence but don't know because they were looking for the wrong thing. Yeah. It's a sad state to, to, be, to be in God's presence, but you didn't see him because he was focused on something else. Yeah. Hmm. Somebody might be asking, do I have to deal with what I'm dealing with this long? Will I spend all my money searching for the answer I want? And if you're sitting there asking that question right now, you really missed the whole purpose of what I just said. Because her money, her length of distress were all functions of her faith. All she had to do is reach out. And when she reached out, he changed her life. I'm trying to tell somebody this morning, all you got to do is when you reach out, when you walk by faith and not by sight, when our faith demonstrates the choice that we've made in Jesus Christ, Victory is assured to us, which leads me to point number three, and then we're going to get on out of here. Amen? Is that your true identity is revealed by who you serve. I watch, I watch superhero movies. It, it just helped me get my mind off all the other stuff. But what I found out is that with Marvel, all the Marvel characters, Thomas, they, they wear their powers on the outside. Uh -huh. So you know Wolverine. Wolverine, Wolverine. Uh -huh. You know Spider-Man. You know, well, Spider-Man, obviously, you got a secret out there. But a lot of them have that power. But, but when you go to D.C., you got Batman, who was Bruce Wayne. Yeah. He got an alter ego. Superman, Clark Kent. And so you don't really know their true identity until they put it on whatever they're supposed to put on. Which means that in some cases, they man, they're not authentic. See, authentic, your authenticity is based upon what you have on at all times. Which means that if I'm a believer in Christ, I have to wear my belief in Christ all the time. Regardless of what circumstance I am. So when I go to the grocery store, I got to put on Christ. I got to have on Christ. When I go to the movies, I have on Christ. When I go to uh, the food places, I got to have on Christ. When I go to work, I have on Christ. And I sure should have on Christ when I come to work. I mean, to church. So, 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 I should have my... Identity should not be predicated on where I am. That's right. Amen. 
all what I got on. Because sometimes we super when we got a suit and a dress on. Hallelujah. I'll leave that alone. Amen. Amen. Jesus answers the question of who is his brother and mother. So the question again was, who is my mother and my brother? Uh -huh. Jesus comes back and the text says, he looked around about them which said about him and said, behold my mother and brother. What y'all think he was saying? Y'all could speak. It's okay. Y'all can talk back. It's all right. Just say amen. amen. Okay, good. Amen. I know y'all lied. Amen. 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 What he was basically saying was that my mother and my brother are the people who are in here with me right now. Right. Ah. He declares that those present represented his mother and brother, and the reason being is that they were obedient to what was required in the moment, revealing that whosoever shall do what? The will of the Father, if you got your Bible open, amen, amen. The same is my brother and my mother and my sister. Our obedience, and that's total, not partial. You cannot be partially obedient to God and still operate in obedience. You can't have to do anything God asks you to do and think you can get the benefits of obedience. Anything aside from all our obedience is still disobedience, which represents sin, amen? Amen. So, so they're instructed to do or uh, to reveal his intentions to truly serve. It says it, it, it can be convenient to try to take shortcuts. Yeah. Yeah. I got any shortcuts tonight? Yeah. Mm. Anybody ever try to do it your way? Yeah. That's a shortcut. If you didn't try to do it your way, that's a shortcut. Because somebody, somebody, somebody said, Pastor, I ain't taking no shortcuts. I, I, I can't turn right the same way I used to come. No, 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 I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about shortcuts in life. Amen. I, I'm talking about trying to do it your way and thought you was going to get away. Amen. I, I'm talking about trying to do it all the things that you wanted to do, and then you found out that everything you did that wasn't according to the will of God, especially when you knew what God wanted you to do, blew up in your face. Amen. It is amazing to me, amen, that sometimes our reason for not coming to church is that we'll say something like this I don't come because I don't want to be held accountable. And if I don't hear it, I'm not accountable. Here's what I'm, I'm, I'm going to debunk the myth. Because you have been exposed to it and have the opportunity to get it, it's no longer an excuse not to have it. Because what he says is that you're around enough people. If I'm, I'm sitting in this sanctuary now with family and friends, y'all all hang around y'all family. Which means that your light should be shining in the midst of your family, which means they never have an excuse not to say they don't know no word. Amen. I put some pressure on some folks. Amen. A -a Amen. Amen. We cannot hustle God. You can't hustle. You can't, you can't, you can't say, Lord, I'll do it today, and then you got your finger behind your back because you say I didn't really mean it. Because he already knows what you mean when you say it. So I'm, I'm trying to get us to keep away from the hustles. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You can hustle a whole lot of stuff. Amen. Amen. You you sell makeup. There's people selling, amen. Amen. Stolen bath and body work, <laughs> candles, everything else. You can hustle a whole bunch of stuff. But it is nothing like having an authentic relationship with God. The most refreshing thing in your whole life, let me help somebody. The most refreshing thing that you can do in your whole life is to give yourself totally to the Lord. Because what will happen as a result of you giving yourself totally to the Lord, it will free you from some things that have tried to bound you in your life. And the moment that you say, yes, Lord, and I'm not saying that you haven't, but I, I, I just believe, I, I, I'm sensing, amen, that some people are still hold up on some stuff, amen. Right, the right. moment that you release and you try not to lean into your own understanding on what you think God means or meant about something and accept what God said as the truth and walk in it, your life will change. Yes, yes Lord. I got one say here witness. I got one with a hand up. Witness. Amen. I'm a witness. Amen. A amen. Amen. The moment I stop trying to be this, amen, Sister Carol and I hooked up. I think the moment she stopped trying to do that, we hooked up. 
the moment we was out from that stuff, we hooked up. Amen. And it's been 25 blissful years. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, now y'all clapping. I ain't said it was perfect. Right. But I said blissful. Yeah. Why? Because the Lord, when I didn't want to act right, the Lord said, get it right. Yeah. And if she didn't want to accept something right, the Lord said, get it right. Yeah. And what we do is go in prayer and the Lord got it right. Amen. Yeah. Why? Because now the option is no longer separation or departure. Amen. Why? Because there's a commitment. Amen. Priority, loyalty, and service. And so when we looked at those three things, that's where we stood. And as we stood on that, I'm not, I, everybody ain't going to be here. That's right. That's right. That's and don't stay in something that's hurtful. That's right. Let me say it again. Don't stay in something that's hurtful for nobody. Kids, dog, job, none of it. Don't stay in nothing that's hurtful to you. Because job, I'm going to say it again. Job. If your job causes you more stress than anything else in your life, it's time for a new job. I know it to be true, because I don't stay on a job that don't want me. I don't. I don't. Amen. Just care no, I done went a couple of jobs. And the Lord blessed me in them. Why? Because I left right. And I did right when I was dead. I wasn't still in paper clips. I wasn't bringing home their paper. I went to work, I did what I was supposed to do, and when I got done, I left. Yeah, yeah. Let me hear, let me say that again. Yeah. I went to work, did what I was supposed to do, and I left. Uh -huh. You know what that means? That the moment I stepped off the premises, I didn't think about the job no more. Amen. You know what I thought about it? When I clocked in the next morning, Amen. I don't bring mess home. Right. And some of us gonna be better off when we learn that you don't bring mess to where you sleep either. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Over 2,000 years ago, what we find is that God was very serious about our salvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was very serious about it. He was so serious that he provided his very best to make a man's salvation a reality to us. That's right. Over 2,000 years ago, it was Jesus' priority, his loyalty and service that set the stage for eternal salvation for everybody who believes. I say everybody who believes because not everybody believes. But when you do believe, you have eternal salvation and the greatest family unit was the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what we see is that there's a family unit that was on one accord that orchestrated the ultimate answer to sin. Jesus comes, lays down his life, amen, on Calvary's cross. The Bible says that Jesus goes to the cross. He goes to the cross. He's tried six times. He's tried and accused of something that he never did and they have him before the people and they say, now, tell us who you want. They said, give us Barabbas. They take Barabbas, Barabbas is free, he's a known criminal, and Jesus is now taken to the cross, he carries his own cross, they raise him up, they raise him between two thieves, he sits there, and there Jesus says, Father, forgive him. But they know not what they do. He's understanding that they were doing what they thought was right, but at the same time, he's asking God to forgive them so that they didn't end up in hell for their actions. Bob declares that he drops his head and locks him his shoulder, gives up the ghost. They take him down off the cross. They bury him in a bar tomb. He stays there all day Friday, all day Saturday, but on the third day morning, he gets up with all power, all power in his hands. The Bible says he's ascending to heaven. Now he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's making and pleading intercession for our sin, and one day he's coming back. That's the hard part for a lot of folks, Sister Jackie, is that they don't see Jesus coming back to receive because they said, my grandma told me that. My great grandma told me that. They've been talking about it coming back for all their life. Here's what I want you to know. Get yourself ready because what you don't want to do is either get back and you ain't ready. Amen. Because just like his mother and his brother and his sister were on the outside, you'll be on the outside knocking, talking about can I get in? Read Matthew 25. Yeah, yeah, five foolish and five wise virgins. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they were sitting outside, the five talking about, oh, can you give us some of your oil? I said, no, uh-uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my oil. You had time to get yours, too? Yeah, right. The gate has closed. The door is closed. Yeah, There's no right. more entry. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. 
Life comes with consequences, y'all. For those youth that's here with me, for the older people, guess what? You can still have consequences at 70. I, I've seen some foolish 70s. Consequences that are the result of our actions. And so as you reflect on your relationship with God, ask yourself, am I outside or from inside? Ask yourself, am I outside or am I inside? Am I outside or am I inside? Yeah. Amen. Can I do better to get closer to him? Will I send others to speak on my behalf? Or will I take the necessary steps to speak to him for myself? Uh -huh. You got to make up in your mind that you're going to talk to the Lord for yourself. Yeah. And when you do, amen, you can't rely on what mama prayed for you. No. You're going to have to pray for yourself. You're going to have to speak for yourself. He tells that young man in John 19, he said he's old enough. He can speak for himself. He said, well, why are you blind? He said, speak for him. He speak for, talk to him. And what you're going to have to do is learn how to speak for yourself. And say to the Lord, Lord, I messed up. But Lord, I want to make it better. And the only way I can make it better is I can surrender my life to you. And Lord, I just ask that you take me just as I am. Filthy, worn. I, I, I'm filthy. We all is filthy way. But Lord, I want you to take me right now so that I can be a part of your family. So that ultimately, amen, I learn how to stay in good company and not bad. I want you to choose good. I mean, I mean, I want you to choose God. Amen. Amen. Choose God. And when you choose God, 2 Corinthians 5, 9, 10 helps us here. He says, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body or her body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what company will you stay in? I want to stay in good company. Yeah. Give the Lord a hand for it. Amen. 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 God is good. All the time. We extend an invitation on this morning. There may be somebody who has heard the word of God, who has made up in their mind, amen, that I'm where I need to be partially, but I still got some work that needs to be done. So I need to surrender a little bit more of myself. Will you come on today? Will you come on today? Will you come on today? Will there be one on today? Amen. Hard not your heart on today. Harden not your heart on today. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that working in us. Will you come on today? Will you come on today? Will you come? 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 Come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Will you come on today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. We see that there are none. But there's always room in the kingdom. Let's give the Lord a hand praise this morning. Amen. 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 I know I didn't do much. Amen. But the Lord bless you this morning. Just give him another hand praise. Amen. 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 For those who are uh, with us online, we thank you all for coming on today. We are grateful and thankful for your presence. We pray the Lord blesses you throughout this week and that you receive uh, full benefits of being in the right relationship with him. God bless you and have a blessed week. Amen. Amen.